Greetings everyone, this is Ryan Roy with a Liberty 3D Citizens review of the Third Powers toolset. Like some people out there, I was skeptical at first and considered very carefully whether or not I wanted to take advantage of the bundled pricing that Third Powers made available after publishing their plugins for Lightwave. But with their marketing tactics of extending their sale for a few days, I ended up caving in and getting it. So, with that said, did it live up to my expectations? Is it really worth the price of admission? Let's find out. First off, know that the developer does provide sample content and well-written instructions for basic use, which really helped out a lot. The tools do come with a small learning curve, but from my perspective, it isn't too bad. The first tool that I would like to cover, Cage Deformer, is the plugin of greatest interest to me because animation is my specialty and it addresses some of the long-standing issues of being unable to perform complex hand key deformations in Lightwave. So let's give it a try on one of my characters from the animated series of Delura. Cage Deformer allows the user to manipulate the points and polygons of a low detail geometry object and have it affect a high detail one. To make this work, all I did was cut out part of the character's face that I'd like for the cage deformer to affect, put it in its own layer, and set everything up in layout so that the cage influences the character. After the short setup, let me demonstrate how I'm using the cage deform tool in production. I have Dejar doing some basic facial movements, and let's say that I want to add some detail, but I don't want to have to bother with complex rigging, and I really want full control over this guy. I'll just activate the Cage Deform tool, select the cage that I'd like to edit, and when doing facial edits, I'm most often using the Grab, GrabNet, and Magnet tools. It feels very much like a sculpting workflow where I can just right click to resize the brush and apply changes with the left mouse button. Some of the differences in these tools are subtle, so you'll need to spend some time exploring them. Grab, for instance, lets me manipulate just the upper lip even if the character's mouth is closed. Grab net will just grab the whole bunch of geometry and push it in the direction that I move the mouse in. Cage Deformer does have its own timeline and keyframe space not accessible anywhere else in the interface, which can be seen as a setback in certain cases where you're dealing with very long scenes with lots of keyframes, or you want to save animations driven by Cage Deformer and wish to transfer them to another scene. The timeline also does not auto-scroll. To me, these issues are not a huge deal, but if future revisions, updates, or upgrades are made available, these are some of the things that I would like to see changed or improved in some way, shape, or form eventually. Overall, however, Cage Deformer is a game changer for Lightwave animators and is worth every penny. I cannot recommend this tool highly enough if you intend to do any kind of animation in Lightwave that involves organic deformations because it will bring your workflow to a new level and enable you to do things that would otherwise require incredibly complex and time-consuming rigging to achieve. The next tool is a Lattice Deformer. Not quite as exciting as Cage Deformer, but it does allow for basic deformations based on the points of a grid. Its operation is very similar to that of Cage Deformer. The next three tools are for Lightwave Modeler. The highlight of the bunch being MetaMesh, which allows for some interesting workflows that provide real-time feedback while editing geometry fusion and Boolean operations. There are various settings in the numeric panel that can be manipulated to fine-tune the result to your liking. Want to add a handle to this cup? No problemo. Now, the wires of the model aren't always going to be perfect like in this example when you use MetaMesh, but even so it enables a new level of modeling capability that Lightwave previously didn't have at all. You can also use it to Boolean stuff visually too, using various shapes. So I'll pull down this geometry pattern here and use MetaMesh to cut out what could be a ridged grip for the cup. Don't consider this an all-encompassing example of MetaMesh's capabilities, 
Modeling has never been my strength, but this tool has opened up a lot of doors for me as a producer. The Boolean tool on the surface seems similar to MetaMesh, except you take a background layer of geometry and use it to either cut, add, stencil, etc. interactively onto anything in the foreground layer. The main difference here is that the Boolean tool can produce cleaner results suitable for non-organic models, product visualization, and other places where MetaMesh may not operate as well performing similar functions. In this example, I cut out a bunch of holes into this cup, and I can also cut out openings to other such things using this tool. In general, think of it as Boolean on steroids. Last on the list is the Heat Shrink Plus tool. Now, Lightwave 11.6 does have a native version of this tool, but I feel the third power's implementation has quite some advantages over it. Here's the bracelet example that comes bundled with the tool. With Heat Shrink Plus, I can just run the tool and the whole thing just wraps around the forearm cleanly and uniformly. This makes for an incredibly efficient way to add detail to existing models. With Lightwave's Heat Shrink, you don't get quite the same result and you'd have to take different modeling approaches to get it to look right. So don't think that Heat Shrink Plus is simply a clone of Lightwave's implementation. It is vastly superior and easier to work with. Well, this concludes the Liberty3D.com Citizens Review of the Third Powers toolset. I've included a link to the Third Powers website in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.